So now that you understand uniform data, we know everything we need to know to render a three-dimensional scene. That's that's pretty cool. And we're going to do something very basic to start out with. What we shall do is place our box or our cube, either way, whatever you want to call it. We'll place our cube into the scene, and we shall translate the cube into the scene to the negative three position. And the reason why I want to go to negative three is I know the camera is already looking at the negative z or down the negative z axis. So if I move the cube down the negative z axis, I know the cube will be in front of the camera. And then we will project the cube. And so the camera will see the side of the cube like this. And then we'll do something a little fancier and rotate the cube later. But I want to go through these steps just real slow so you can understand what I'm about to do. When we first put our cube into the world, each vertex has a position in the world. Here's one vertex, another vertex, another vertex, another vertex. Oh, another vertex down here, another one down here, and then there's two more in the back. Each vertex has a location. We've load ver loaded vertex data. You've seen that with the triangle. What we need to do is hit every single one of these vertices with a matrix. And I'm not even going to worry about the world matrix. We don't need to worry about this stuff over here because I just am going to move the cube directly in front of the camera. I don't need to worry about moving the world if the world is already positioned and aligned directly with what the camera is looking at. So don't worry about the, the world transforms over here. But every single one of these vertices we need to hit with uh, a model transform, which would be this matrix right here. Again, you don't need to worry about what these numbers mean and what they do. If you want to, and I strongly suggest you do, go check out the game engine programming playlist. I walk through transformations, rotations, all of that, explain how that works. But anyway, you can kind of think of this as a black box, if you like. But this black box, or this operator, we'll actually call the matrix an operator. Well, wow, that's kind of cool. A transformation operator. We shall apply that transformation to every one of these vertices individually. And we shall do that in the vertex shader, because the vertex shader runs once per vertex. And it hit me, I just circled the vertex down here off your screen. I'm sorry, I didn't realize you can't see that part of the screen. Anyway, let's pick on one vertex. I'm going to erase all this. Erase, erase, erase. Erase, erase, erase. Let's pick on... This vertex seems to be front and center. Well, there's more front... Well, yeah, sure, we'll go with this one. doesn't really matter. The concepts are all the same for all the vertices. We'll hit that vertex. I'll call it vertex V. A vertex V, we'll hit it with this model transform we have right here. So I'll do model transform. I'll put it in brackets because it is a matrix. We'll multiply that matrix against this vertex. A vertex is just a matrix of three if you've done any matrix multiplication. If you haven't, don't worry about it. We'll hit the vertex with this model transformation. You could even think of this T as just a translation because all I wanted to do in this matrix was do a translation. And after we do that, let's actually do that. I'm going to change this back to negative 3. We'll translate by negative 3. That particular vertex will move to its new location right here. All right, and I'll call that, I don't know, let's call it new position. And it's a vector. You know, I should do this syntax that Notation is the notation we use for vectors. So we have this new position vector. And then we shall take the new position vector, new position vector, and hit it with another matrix. And the second matrix we shall hit it with is the projection matrix, which I don't have on the UI. I told you I didn't have room for it. But here, I'll just put the projection matrix right here. Projection matrix. And it is determined by a few variables we've seen in previous videos, but mainly when I slide the slider up, you'll see the projection matrix take effect again. So let me put a P in here. We'll hit the new position with the projection matrix. So then that vertex will have yet another new position from where it was at after the translation to right here in its projected space. So we shall call that projected position. I had a new projected position. I should do an arrow there because I've done an arrow there. Anyway, that's what we're going to do in our code. 
I'm going to grab a quick screenshot of what we have here so we can reference it later in the video. Just put it off to the side. But if we do all that correctly, then our view will look something similar to this. We'll render the side of the cube. And I know you can't see it off the bottom of the screen, but that's where we're headed. So let's go back to our code, see if we can set up some uniforms and make that happen. Now if you call here, we called make triangle. And when we did make triangle, we were able to render a triangle. But instead of making a triangle, I want to make a cube. I added this function offline. I didn't do it in front of you, but if I hit F12 here, you can see the the code for making a cube. I put all this vertex data onto the stack, a lot very similar to how we did the triangle. Here's all the vertex information for a cube. I should probably put this on my website so you can download it and don't have to type it in. But you can see all these vertices and there's actually 23 of them. You'll understand why later. But some vertices are in the same location as others and that's because I want to vary the color. But we'll talk about those details later. Just ignore it for now. So the num vertices will again be the the num array elements. We saw that in previous videos. And then I copy that data onto a new vertex array out on the heap. Same thing with the indices. And we have the top, left, front, back, bottom, all that stuff. And then num indices. Oh, I didn't use my num array elements here. Let's use it there so I don't have to say this again. Uh, num indices is the number of array elements inside of stack indices. Make an array out on the heap, copy it in, and then return it. All right, so we have this make cube function now. And I can call make cube. And this try is no longer, it's not a long, it's no longer a try, it's a cube. But I'm going to call it a shape, just to be general. And then everywhere I have try, I need to replace that with shape. I guess I could do a control H, but I don't know. Sometimes I don't trust control H. But now we've sent this cube data down there. Let's just run this. <laughs> We're not doing any transformations yet. We can see, oh, there's nothing on the screen. So we need to make some matrices and send them down to our shader and use them in our shader 